Here we are, MT10 launch on really late and faffing. <laughs> MT10 launch, we're down near Almeria, and this is the new MT10. And the fact that I can just, I've driven it six yards and been able to just feel confident enough to wheel it off a sleeping policeman bodes very well. Uh, so while we're just making our way up into the mountains, I may as well talk about some generic body size issues a lot of you asking in my response in your responses to my instagram tweet instagram tweet i'm such an old man <laughs> my instagram post uh, about asking questions first of all what does it feel like for the taller gentleman i am indeed a taller gentleman at six foot three point five it feels pretty good the legs are fairly cramped not as much as on a uh, uh s thousand as on the r1 sorry uh, the grips feel quite nice and fat. They feel fatter than normal. And I do like a fat grip, especially if you've got big hands. I don't like these tiny little thin grips and you're all kind of like, eh. Uh, the seat is not very comfortable if you move back on it. There's a, like a little lump which kind of supports, I guess. Sitting close to the tank's quite nice. Uh, so ergonomics wise, feels pretty good. It feels like it doesn't really want you to move around that much. The R1 seat's really long and you can kind of slide around it a bit. This is a bit more uh, stable. Uh, is it high? It is fairly high, actually. 825, according to the presentation, if I can remember it from last night. Um, bars are, feel like a good, a good width. Um, lots of feel coming through. This is, it feels very solid instantly. It feels very supportive, quite firm. It's still definitely a sportier bike. Um, so what about the ergonomics? Foot pegs, positions, controls are quite nice. They're nicely positioned. It's very neutral. Uh, I th the bars feel fairly... F oh, there's quite a big gap, actually, between the seat and the tank, so I think a shorter person may end up doing a bit of uh, leanage to get to the bars. But ergonomically, I think it's a pretty good mix. So let's talk about the one, the major thing that pisses me off about the R1, which I own. I'm an R1 owner. And that is the jerky throttle. So, have they done anything to this? I'd say they have, actually. I'd say they have. It, defi it definitely feels like you can sit at a reasonable town speed now without hitting any tiny bump in the road and that little oscillation making you go... Ugh! It's definitely more mellow. It's still fairly aggressive. And we're in um, standard mode right now. I believe there's three modes, standard, in a very confusing manner, standard, A, and B. And I think B is the most brutal, which just seems a bit weird to me. Uh, looking at this nice new dash, they've, they've kind of got the same sort of design as the R1. It's not a colour dash, this is where they're saving some money. Oh, and I will find out, I need to get exact confirmation about how much it costs, but I believe though it, it's, it's pretty reasonable. But the dash looks quite nice. Um, got a fuel gauge. I don't know why they can't put fuel gauges on sports bikes these days, but we've got one on this. I'm looking forward when we get up to a bit more speed to test these brakes, because brakes is another bugbear of the R1. I don't like the brakes. <laughs> but it feels pretty fun. Right, first of all, let's get this into uh, B mode and I think you can do it whilst rolling yes you can thank God for that that's another piss bear of the uh, R1 as you have to stop to change the power mode so this does not have the same electronics package and suite as the R1 uh, again that's where I think they've saved a bit of money oh it does feel nice though oh I wouldn't say it's budget but it's def it's more basic for the if there's no slide control or any shit like that. <laughs> I think it's going to be a jizz machine. Factoid. So it doesn't have quite the sophistication levels of that. Let, let's, let's just go back a second. The R1 is a superbike machine designed to go very, very fast on a racetrack. Wow, well, there's no wheelie control, I'll tell you that. 
and there's plenty torque on this but hey again the brakes no get rid of these calipers Yamaha get rid of them I think it's the only proper manufacturer now to not use Brembo's that's where it's at feels very solid very smooth actually throttle is is brutal enough am I I'm in BMO I'm in the most brutal mode B for brutal uh, wind protection what are we doing now 128 what's that 80 mile an hour actually feels pretty good um, weirdly I could feel more on my shoulders than on my head and apparently this in the presentation last night, this deflector thing here, they were talking about how the, the science behind that is kind of scoop the air up over the rider's head. You know, I'm six foot 3.5 and uh, I'm never going to be in the bubble of a standard bike. So it's just something that a taller rider just has to deal with. Feels nice and nimble, but doesn't want to, feels like, oh, it doesn't want to break away. It's very Tuono-ish, actually. Chassis feels very nice. onto these terrible brakes I mean I say terrible they're not terrible but they're not oh they're not super bike brakes but even though they are it's weirdly okay let's just not talk about the brakes it's clear I don't like the brakes I kind of wish I wore leathers now with knee sliders Wait. <laughs> oh, it's a cheese machine we found one! We found another one! <laughs> it's nice, guys. It's good. I'd stay out of uh, first gear in uh, brutal mode though. It's a bit... I'd get into second as quick as you can. It seems like second kind of does the job anyway. It's quite talky, punchy. <laughs> this is fucking brilliant. Actually, it's very good. I can forgive the uh, pretty poor design of the rear tail lights, but there's definitely, oh, and I'm looking forward to later, my favorite thing, which I always talk about, is cruise control. And this does actually have cruise control. There is no quick shifter, but I believe you can get it as a uh, purchasable option. But power is, is good. There is ample power. You do not need any more than this. This will keep up with sports bikes all day long, all your mates. But, oh, we've well, got something comfortable and upright for. Well, you'll probably be able to go quicker on this. On a road than you will on a superbike. What else have people have been asking? Is it as ugly in the flesh? Well, I don't think it is ugly. There's only one area I, I dislike. I think the front, I think it looks cool. It reminds me of uh, Johnny Five from, was it Short Circuit? Input him. A mixture of that and Wally. <laughs> and I can see where the, the lights have been taken off the R1. They need to stick them in something similar. I like it. I think it's, it's better than just putting out, anyone can make an averagely good looking bike. This is a bit different. It gives people a choice, doesn't it? Take a risk, God's sake. 